human capital is the, 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 the asset that this continent has. And therefore, we must do whatever it takes to invest, to sharpen, to prepare this asset that is our young people. And it is the reason why we're saying the young people are going to define what becomes of this continent and what becomes of the globe. In any case, all of us know the statistics. By 2050, a quarter of the world's population will be living here. And most of them, 70%, will be young people. And therefore, we must make every effort to invest in these young people. And the first investment that we must invest in is education, making sure that they is affordable, relevant, and accessible education. Apart from investing in education as a way of equipping our young people, two other things are very important. Health is very important. And it is the reason why in Kenya um, we are scaling up promotive and preventive health and taking it to the bottom of the pyramid. And finally, on the subject of youth, it's not just important for us to provide education and to make sure that we have healthy young people. We must think through. You know, for a very long time, we haven't thought clearly about what happens to these youngsters when they come out of college, when they come out of school, when they come out of university. What we have done in Kenya this year, intentionally and deliberately, we have a deliberate program on creating jobs. Today in Kenya, we have made a deliberate policy intervention to say there will be a housing tax of 1.5% out of my salary because we have 6 million people living in informal settlements in Kenya. Informal settlements is a problem. It is a challenge. But we can turn the informal settlements into an opportunity by creating the opportunity to, for housing, which opportunity will create jobs for our young people. So we sort out two problems. We create jobs using the housing plan, and we give houses to those living in informal settlements. So we turn a challenge into an opportunity. Number two, we are deliberate about uh, making sure that what we can produce locally, we don't import. Let me give you examples. This year, we made a decision that we are not going to import cement or steel or furniture or fish because we can uh, manufacture furniture locally. We have half a million young people getting out of our tivets. If we don't have, poli have a policy intervention that says furniture is manufactured locally by our young people, we will continue to import furniture from all manner of places, and our young people are idle. So that's why I'm saying we must be deliberate about creating jobs locally. That is how we are going to stop our young people from getting into boats. I would not entirely agree that we should keep everybody at home. I mean, we live in a global village. I mean, if there are opportunities in America and we have young people who can explore those opportunities, why not? Or in Europe or in other places. That's fine with me. But they must not run away because we have failed 
to provide opportunity at home. And that is why I am saying we must be deliberate. We must be intentional about creating opportunities for young people in our economies. You know, the problem we always have is that there is an assumption that somehow after a young person gets out of school or college or with a university degree, they will somehow figure out some opportunity or somehow the economy will create some jobs. I promise you, I have been in this space for a while now, opportunities are deliberately created. Otherwise, they will not be there.